All right, so today we're going to be checking out a new software that Raspberry Pi just came out with called Raspberry Pi Connect a couple of days ago to combat the situation that we've been having with using remote access through Wayland. So let's check it out. And here's the blog post, which I'll leave all the links down in the description below for about this new Raspberry Pi Connect. And if you're going through this, it does say that you will need to use Bookworm and it does support Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5. Those are just the gist of it. Now, the biggest gist about this blog post that I'm reading about is that they are running off relay servers on their UK site. And it seems right now it is for free, but I think it's gonna be temporary where this is gonna be similar to like running Rust test where you have to run your own relay servers if you want to have a mass connection without paying for anything. So eventually this might turn into a pay service, but I'm not too sure. Especially if you wanna use the connections through the Raspberry Pi website, but you can always host your own with no limitations that they're basically saying. So for now, since it's still beta testing, everything is still free under the hood, but eventually there might be a cost if you decide to stay with Raspberry Pi just to maintain their servers for their relay servers. But eventually, like I said, I think you should be able to run your own. To install this is basically very simple. You just need to make sure you're running the Raspberry Pi Bookworm, which is the latest release. You should be able to follow these commands to run it. You'll be able to find more information on how to run it in the background through CLI without having to have the full desktop running at first to get this working, but it'll have you connected to an ID. You do have to make an account with Raspberry Pi, verify everything. And I've already done all these steps just to see how this connection works. But in the meantime, it actually solves a lot of the issues that I've been having because I do need to use remote access at points for my Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5. I don't have to downgrade my desktop to X and I can stay with the Wayland. So I'm gonna show you a little example right here. So here we have a Raspberry Pi 5, which I've been using for my Proxmox, but that's why I still have a partition for it but you do see this new little icon and you could allow screen sharing and you sign in. So in order to connect to this desktop, what I need to do is actually go over to Raspberry Pi Connect, log in, and your devices will be listed over here. So I've got 10, 5, 15, whatever devices you have, it will be all listed over here. As soon as I hit connect, it'll bring me to this new pop-up window, which allows me to run my desktop through this environment. So you're seeing what you see here, you see that there's PVE over here, my folders, everything runs really smooth, especially that it's running off this UK server. So the latency is there, but it's not that bad. And again, if you start running your own relay servers in the States or wherever you are, it might be a little bit fit faster. But for now, since there's not many connections, I think that's why the bandwidth is pretty good. And if I was to have this on my little Pi KVM and show you this little, where's this pop-up window? Right here off to the side. You could tell it's actually pretty smooth. I mean, it's not as smooth as running it off my Pi KVM, but I can run a lot of stuff. Audio doesn't pass through, so you're not gonna get that. You're just gonna have visuals. So if I go over to YouTube, I'm gonna click whatever, Rambo, or something like this, and you can see it actually runs pretty smooth, even if there's video playing. Obviously, there's a little bit of a lag or delay or latency between the two, but it does correct itself. It has a little pause and now it'll correct itself. But otherwise, it works just as it's intended. But again, this only does work on Bookworm and Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. So if you got Raspberry Pi 3 or you're still on the old bullseye, then it won't have this option available. So let me close this out real quick and I'm gonna show you. Now I do have another prompt over here. This is my Raspberry Pi 4 that I actually used as a teleprompter. This is running Bullseye, so Neo Fetch. I don't think I have Neo Fetch installed. If I could type, yeah, I don't have Neo Fetch installed. All right, a quick install of Neo Fetch on my Bullseye installation on my Raspberry Pi 4 will reveal that it is running on, does it even say it here? Oh yeah, there you go, Bullseye. And because it's running on Bullseye, even if I try sudo apt install rpi connect, it won't work because it's not available on the Bullseye operating system. So you will need to upgrade this to Bookworm just to get that option available, which I will do soon on this particular device because I think this Raspberry Pi Connect is pretty good right now. And I want to test it a little bit further, but for now, everything seems to be working pretty good. 
where I might rely on the system later on and eventually build my own if I need to. It's similar to what I would run, again, like Rust Desk on my regular desktop PCs already. I just need to know that I have five or 10 available devices that I can connect to any time and I could actually just see if they're all available or not and do upgrades if I need to remotely. And this works worldwide. There's no for port forwarding or anything you have to do. As soon as you connect Raspberry Pi Connect, it will connect to their relay server and then bounce back the information back to your desktop using their accounts. You still have access to the old uh, real VNC if you still want to drop it back down to X. But for now, this is a definitely good option to have. Let me know what your thoughts about this are. Um, I'm interested in testing other stuff too, but I know media works pretty well, but audio doesn't transfer through. Everything runs pretty smooth. I did have a little bit of issue when I was running some weird hotkeys. So you do have these little hotkeys on the bottom just in case if you do need to run like alt tab, whatever it was. But my issue was running, I think alt 11, trying to get a browser to full screen. But otherwise, I think it's still gonna be improved upon. This is still beta testing. So there are gonna be a few things that's gonna be like a hiccup. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. Thanks for watching guys.